Hi there, and uh, welcome back to Wood Turning Tool Store. So, um, that intro was just a little bit of fun. I uh, actually recorded this video and my microphone wasn't working. So, we'll be uh, turning this cast resin piece. Uh, it was a uh, auction item at the Rocky Mountain Wood Turning Symposium back in September uh, that I bought. Um, it's from uh, uh, Bob Franklin, and you can find him on Facebook at uh, Franklin Wood Turning Craft and Hybrid Blanks. So it's my first resin cast turning, so hopefully it goes well. Um, you'll see in the video how it goes. So uh, thanks for joining me, and I uh, appreciate you uh, come along for the ride. So I've got it mounted uh, between uh, drive centers. There's a, um, a little uh, uh, multi-prong spur in, in the chuck, and then at the live center, of course. I'm using a negative rake scraper uh, to start with. Uh, in fact, probably use negative rake scraper on this thing 90% uh, of the time. Um, I don't own any carbide tools, so this is a high-speed steel car, uh, negative rake scraper. So, uh, coming to cut the tenon, I've actually got a, uh, a slightly different tool here. It's still a negative rake scraper, but it has a uh, uh, edge, um, front edge and a side edge ground on it. So, uh, easy enough to make a tenon with this. Just back to uh, general shaping. We're uh, using the uh, high speed steel negative rake scraper and uh, just shaping as we go. You can see the this plastic resin flying off is uh, is quite the uh, quite the thing to watch. So. so this kind of cutting uh, certainly dulls tools. So uh, using a uh, hone to. Uh, re-hone or, or sharpen the uh, negative rake scraper first on the top edge and now on the bottom edge trying to create a little bit of a burr. You can see in the slow-mo that it works fairly well. See the shaping action, I hold the tool tight to my body and I move my body and pivot my body around. So. Some nice uh, slow motion action, and then we get this nice side view showing that negative rake scraper. So now uh, when you reverse chuck it, or reverse it and, and mount it in the chuck, I should say, um, and I bring up a tailstock, you can see the tailstock uh, live center has got a very small point, it's actually the Cindy Drozda uh, miniature live center, and uh, it works fairly well, you can get nice and close uh, up to the nose with it. negative rake scraper getting in close to the nose uh, and able to kind of get that shape that I need uh, without getting in the way of the uh, live center. So with the uh, tailstock pulled away, um, we are able to get access to the very last you know, top point and uh, able to scrape away. There is a bit of chatter here um, with this much kind of hanging off the edge of the tool and so I do turn up the uh, RPM a little bit to try and reduce that and then end up uh, supporting the, the turning from underneath as I uh, do some final, uh, final scraping and, and shaping. So 
So here I'm actually using a skew to get into the corner, cut away that stuff, and I get into uh, to shaping that bottom edge, uh, the bottom transition a bit better. So now we move into sanding. I'm starting with 80 grit. I, uh, as you uh, see, uh, the scratch pattern, I want all those dark and white lines to kind of blend together to one color. That's what I'm looking for. That way it gets rid of all the high spots. So using a detail gouge and getting into the transition at the bottom, um, forming a bead. This we're cutting the other way, we're cutting, wasting away some of the tenon area, uh, or the top of the tenon, and then uh, cutting that final sort of pass, uh, transition, sloping bottom. And you can see that cut there, and you can see it cuts right down into that other side of the bead. Parting off, just cutting a parting, uh, not parting off completely yet, but parting enough so I can get my sandpaper down in there. And I uh, finished sanded the whole thing to 12,000 with uh, wet micro mesh sanding paper. So I got this block of wood, it's a little piece of poplar, turning it round. This is going to be the base. I uh, uh, make it round and start cutting the, uh, the face off. And then I get some calipers out here and I uh, measure that base of the uh, piece I just parted off and uh, start making sort of a platform, if you will, for the, uh, for the turning. Here I've got sort of the base uh, sort of formed and I'm doing some final cuts with actually uh, my 2 one high-speed steel teardrop scraper and rolling it over like a gouge uh, to make those final cuts on that small bead and then uh, scooping out and cutting the cove with it as well. Here, so here I kind of see the, the rotating action. It's a good top-down view of it uh, and the kind of wispy shavings you get off of that, that tool. So use it for that, use it for the top bead, and then also use it for this flat, um, this flat area transition on the bottom. So here I'm uh, reverse mounting. I'm actually using the original 5 8 uh, forcer bit as a drive center, and then got a wooden cone to stick in the back and start cutting away that final small tenon. Just see it just uh, snaps off. Ah, no big deal. Um, we're going to be sanding the bottom anyway. So here's a spindle adapter. Uh, it changes my big threads to small threads one by eight. I put on a four inch foam gripped handle and a one quarter inch adapter. Uh, this is the modular handle tool system. I take my sanding mandrel and lock it into place tool handle which is now mounted, mounted to my lathe spindle and I've got a perfect sanding platform for this, uh, for this thing. So at 80 grit I go up to I think 320 on the bottom here. Uh, not really necessary. And then that's it. There's the final piece. Thanks for joining and thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next video.